there, my name is Crystal. I'm a veterinary student and today I'm going to talk about my externship at Nausicaa Aquarium, which is the largest aquarium in Europe and it is localized in the north of France in Boulogne-sur-Mer. I had the chance to be two weeks in the sea lion department where you can find six sea lions four males and two females. In this video I will talk about my experience there and um, everything I could do and also um, see with the trainers and uh, the whole team. The first thing that we would do in the morning was to prepare fish for the sea lions. In the kitchen there is a big table with the names of hold the animals and also um, their weight and if they need any medications. There is also the quantity of fish that they will eat during the morning and also during the afternoon. The amount of fish is calculated uh, based on kilocalories that they need and it also depends on the cycle where they are. So um, for example, when they are shedding, they need three times more calories to be able to have enough energy. Sea lions don't drink, so all the water they absorb comes from fish. In fish, you can find between 60 and 70% of humidity, which is crucial for their health. So it is important not to cut fish when you feed them as there would be a lot of water loss. The quantity of fish also depends on the species we are giving to them as some are more fatty and others are lean. Like uh, herring are quite fatty fish and uh, merling are quite um, lean fish. So we have really to balance the type of uh, fish we give to them and really make sure they uh, have the kilocalories they need. So we would give to them merling, herring, caplin, squid, mackerel, and also sprout. My favorite part of the morning was to massage Speedy, which is a 24 years old sea lion. And a few years ago, he had some back issues and had his hand flippers paralyzed. And since that, an osteopath comes every month and uh, it really improved. Now his right flipper moves and he really likes that, so it was pretty fun to be able to uh, massage a sea lion. The trainers use a target that the animal follow. It can be their wrist or also a stick. They also recognize a specific form, which can be a, a cross, a cycle or anything, and uh, each animal has its own form. And if they're asked to um, stay still on it, they uh, do it. They recognize a lot of different um, signs and words and it's really impressive. They are trained to get stimulated and also for uh, medical procedures. The animals are desensitized to different procedures and do it uh, voluntarily with positive reinforcement. So what is positive reinforcement? It means that when the animal does it correctly the trainer bridge, it can be either with a whistle or with a word said in a specific tone. If the animal does it wrongly, they are ignored and um, the trainer gives more attention to uh, the other animal as they always train two animals together. Then the animal noticed that he didn't do it properly and uh, the trainer repeats um, the exercise even though they don't do it properly, they always receive the amount of fish that they are supposed to. They are super smart animals and it's really funny to see that they all have their own personality and how they try to sometimes test the trainers. Uh, it's really important also to always be careful because they are still wild animals even though they are trained and uh, used to human uh, interactions. So you always really have to pay attention and look at them. Medical training is very important as the trainer practice some procedures that could be required if the animal is sick or just to check that the animal is healthy and not hiding anything. 
as the animal is trained to do different procedures voluntarily, it is not needed to be anesthetized, which is safer for the animal and also uh, better for its welfare. Here are a few examples of procedures that they do voluntarily. For example, touch their eyes, their face, um, their body to desensitize them. They also open their mouth and the trainers can uh, brush their teeth. They are also trained for gastric tubing. So um, they let the trainer put a um, gastric tube inside their stomach and it's really important in case um, they are dehydrated and need to have um, some fluid uh, given orally and uh, also to check how the gastric fluids are if they have any um, gastric problem. The trainers can also take blood voluntarily um, usually from interdigital veins which are located in the hen flippers and um, the vet also can take some blood from the gluteal veins but um, it's easier to do it uh, with ultrasound and the needles that are required to reach uh, these veins are huge. I could also auscultate um, their lungs and their heart um, voluntarily. I was really surprised how caudal is the heart. So it's located uh, between the pectoral flippers I'm going to put a, a picture where you can see uh, the anatomy and see how big is the thorax. They also practice uh, x-ray, uh, ultrasounds. Um, that was during the first week, almost every day I could practice uh, ultrasounds. And it was funny because um, they have a machine and they were like, okay, so that's the machine. Now you can do whatever you want with it. And I was like, Nice, but in vet school, I've only practiced uh, ultrasounds, maybe once or twice. So it was like a challenge and every day I was looking for more information and to how to set properly the machine and all the settings you need to use. And yeah, it was really challenging and very nice to see that every day we could see some structure uh, better. We mainly saw um, the heart. And also um, interdigital veins, but like deeper organs. It was really hard to see because they have a very thick uh, blubber layer, which is the subcutaneous fat. And um, the machine uh, that they have there is quite old and also the probes were not the best ones for um, large animals like that. When the vet comes, uh, she has her own uh, ultrasonograph which has a better quality and apparently they can see uh, better the internal organs. So the machine they have is uh, used by trainers more like um, to practice so that when the vet comes the animal are used to um, this kind of uh, procedures. They're also trained for eye drops. And also to have their eyes checked with the light and that's what I did. And I was quite surprised by how the pupil is uh, comparing to other animals. So with the lights, I thought that the pupil wasn't like getting that contracted as it is with cats and dogs, for example. So it was uh, very interesting. They also go voluntarily in a very big cage. Um, which is used in case they have to be anesthetized for a surgery or to get a uh, hormonal implant. These are the main procedures I've seen, but there are a lot of them. So yeah, it's really amazing to see how smart these animals are and how they learn 
can take a long time to learn how to do something that's what I've been talking with the trainers so there are like a lot of different steps uh, before the animal is really able to do some kind of exercises and procedures. There is also another type of training which is more like physical when they are like playing in the water and uh, you can really see that the animals really like that especially Moritz which is female and she's always in the water playing uh, even when the trainer are not asking her to do anything so it was really fun and nice to watch Yay. Tu ne l'arrêtes plus Elle est fait toute seule là Wow. I've also been able to measure the level of chlorine that is in the pool in this aquarium uh, they take samples the morning and the afternoon to check that the levels are correct as excessive amounts of chlorine can cause severe uh, eye problems. I made a post on my Instagram about water quality which is super important for animals uh, living in the water or like sea lions which are semi-aquatic animals. I've also been able to see uh, the manta feeding from uh, the top of the big pool and I was like on some kind of uh, floatable thing and when the manta was going and like getting the food there were some big waves it was so impressive i've also seen the feeding from uh downstairs uh in front of the glass where the public uh, usually is and it was amazing i really love uh manta i have one behind and if you're wondering they're giving them a krill small fish and also smashed shrimps. I've also seen leopard shark trainings and it's quite different. So the uh, sharks were in a pool and there was like a platform on the surface and the trainer would put a target stick on this platform and then the shark would go on top of it. The trainer would touch the body of um, the fish for um, a few seconds and it would bridge and then the shark uh, received some fish and it was really interesting to see that it is also uh, possible to train sharks and stingrays so it's yeah super interesting and it is mainly used in case um, the animal needs to have some ultrasound examinations if they're sick or just to check that the animal is well or if the females are pregnant. I could also assist to the introduction of the new female Kai with each member of the group. First they met through a door. <laughs> And after a few days, each um, member of the group would uh, meet her in the big pool. And it was really magical to see her um, discovering the big pool after one month of quarantine. She was quarantined with the other female, uh, Moritz. And um, yeah, it was really interesting to see how the hierarchy was being established with uh, each member of the group. I think it was a really big chance for me to be able to assist to um, that moment. I am grateful for this experience and I would like to thank the whole team which has been super nice with me. It was amazing to be able to uh, learn from passionate people and to see uh, the bond they have created with this amazing species. And hopefully I'll be able to come back one day and see the team and the sea lions. Merci beaucoup à toute l'équipe, ça a été vraiment une expérience très enrichissante. 
et euh, j'espère pouvoir revenir une fois et en apprendre encore plus sur ces animaux et euh, sur euh, le travail que vous faites euh, avec eux. I'm also super happy that they allowed me to do this video. I hope that you learned something. And if you have any question, uh, be sure to uh, write them in the comments. I will be happy to answer them. So this is the end of the video. I hope that you liked it. If you did, make sure to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and also share it to maybe someone who's interested in sea lions. If you would like me to talk more specifically on a subject which can be nutrition, reproduction, anything related to marine animals and especially sea lions, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you soon for a new video on marine animals.